Hi and welcome to the first video on this channel. This video series will be dealing with setting up a block project with Nest.js and Angular. So in the backend we are using Nest.js and in the frontend mainly Angular. So the first video here is about setting up the project and especially the API so with Nest.js. We will use some things like Nest.js, GitLab, Postgres, Database, environment variables in this video. So let's have a look at the structure of this video and following videos in this series. So at first we will have a small look at the video outcome. Then we will write a user story for this outcome. So we are a little bit like Scrum or Kanban where we implement a single user story. But of course in a very easy easy way so it's maintainable for one person like me. And also the video won't get too long. After we wrote our user story, we will start with the actual implementation. So in this video, setting up the Git and the GitLab project, um, setting up our Nest API, connect um, the API to our Postgres database, and use environment variables with the .env file. And afterwards, we will have a look at the story and look if we implemented it, and then we close it. Throughout this whole video, there will always be some hints displayed like here. And if you want, you can just pause the video and read them. Or if you want, you can just ignore them. So they are just a little bit of additional information. So let's start. So this is what we created in the video. We have here our blog project with a readme and our backend API set up with Nest.js. We have our environment files that we can use to store very sensitive data and it's already being used to um, store the connection to our Postgres database, which is working. And here you can see it's already started and we mapped our get route. So we are seeing here on localhost 3000 hello world and we are connected to our database. Also we have set up our GitLab project and here you can see our code and we have some basic information in readme for it. So this is what we will build now. So let's start with our first uh, to-do. And first we want to write a little story so we have like a little bit of a workflow like in Kanban or in Scrum where we first write a story and then we implement the story. And later we have to can check against it if we met all the criteria that was mentioned in it. So we have here our four lanes backlog which later will help all the tasks we have to do for the next steps that we are doing, doing that we are actually implementing at the moment and done if something is finished. So our first um, to do item would be um, setting up our block project. And now we can give it like some uh, or some information to it. So we can write it as a story and we can say as a technical lead, I want the project to be properly set up so we can work in the next stories with it. And then we can give it some acceptance criteria. So we can check later if we fulfilled everything. And first we want to use uh, Git and GitLab. So we have like a versioning system and we have a remote repository where also you um, as viewer from the video can download the code and check it out and run it on your own computer. Then our uh, API should be set up with nest.js and we want to add a Postgres database to our project. We want to have a .env file so we can store our environment variables there. For example, we later can have like some stages like uh, environment, prod or production. And the last thing is the API should say hello 
world. So that we can see that it's actually working. So now we can save it. And since we are now starting to implement it, we can move it from to do to doing. Now we want to have our repository in GitLab so we can store our code in it and work with it. So you already see I have created a public group YouTube public where I can add all the projects that we are creating. So the first project is um, the blog and it's Slack is also a blog and we want to make it public so you can also access it and we want to initialize the repository of the readme so we can later add there are some information that you have to do to make this code working or some additional information and now that's here we can clone it with ssh and you have to remind you need git on your computer i already installed it and if you want i can also make a different video for it So I have my folder here, so I'm in my GitLab projects and then in my YouTube public folder and here I can just say git clone and use this link that I have. And then we can see here it created our block and we also for git and we have our readme here. Now we can check um, or now we can first cd into it into block and now we want to create our backend API with Nest.js so the first thing to do would be set up the basic Nest.js project for this we use the Nest CLI and I already installed it and we want to check do we have the latest version which is 7.1.2 and yes we have it so with Nest minus minus version you can check this otherwise you would have to upgrade or install it first we can make a separate video of this so now we can just use the CLI and say nest new and this is our API and now we want to use uh, npm and now we have to wait a bit till it's finished so some further information would be if you have the chance or the possibility if you're using a tool always try to use the CLI because um, it always creates something based on best practices from very yeah, very good developers so you can just profit from it so now we see that um, Nest.js project was created and we can check if it's running by going into the API. We can also just go into our folder here and we see block was created and we can now open it with uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm using Git Insider or Code Insiders here. And here you see in our block project we also have our API folder from Nest.js. And now I'm using this terminal here so it's easier to follow and we can cd into the API. And then you can see here we have our package.json file which has all the comments that we will need for the development and for also for the running uh, later in production. So we can just say npm run start dev and now it should start on local uh, host port 3000 and you can see it's starting or it started and it mapped our get route so we have here our basic route string which returns get hello from the service so it will return hello world and we can go into our browser and it returns hello world so now we can cancel this we want to fulfill the next points that we have written down our trailer so this is um, connect to our Postgres database. For this we need um, some packages from Nest.js and the first one will be the config package. Uh, 
and this is used for configuration and the, there we can use the process.env globally and we can store it in our .env files so we want to use this and we can just say npm install save nestjs config and what this does is it saves our dependency nestjs config this module with minus minus save into our package.json so we will find it here now nestjs our dependencies config so here it is and another package that we will need is our database or type orm package to connect to it and here we don't want a mysql but we want to use postgres so we install these and the postgres is named p3 the npm package so we went want to add all three so in sjs type orm the type orm itself and postgres and this will also be added now to this dependencies we can now start by importing them into our app module and first we can use our config module for root and probably you should import it first and this should be from agnest.js config and we also want to import our type orm module and this will also be from nestjs type orm so this for root will now take some options or one option and this is vs global because we want to use it everywhere and we also want to use our type or m module and we are also in our root of the project and not in a feature because in the next video we want to add our user feature module and there we can then connect our type or m module for feature but if, if, since this is the main package or the main module we are using for root here so the options we pass in is the type is postgres our url will be added later we want to auto load entities and we also want to synchronize them what we can do now since we have our config module for root we can add at the top up of our backend project the .env file where we can store our information and here we can add our database url that we are adding later so to this we can get to process dot env dot database url so like we named it here so next thing would be we want to actually add a new instance for this we are using elephant sql which makes it very easy to add a postgres database so we are creating a new instance we can name it block and we want to add the tag youtube for it or we can say youtube public we can select the region so since i'm from europe i'm going with ireland and we can also say that it is free for us so it's very small but this will be enough i think it's about 20 megabits megabytes and here we have our url so you don't need to worry this i will delete this database after this video so if you download the code you have to insert your own database string to it so you can't use this one so now we are giving this into our .env file <clears throat> and if we are now starting 
our project again. We should now be connected to the database. So let's see. So you can see our config module was initialized, also the type ORM module, our app controller, we mapped our get route and we started. So we can now look here and somewhere should be if there's a connection, so here and if we reload, I think it should be connected. Yeah, there it is. So everything is fine. So we can end this. And we can check now at the end of our video. Have we met all our acceptance criteria? So we are using Git and GitLab. Done. Our API should be set up with Nest.js. Done. We have a Postgres database which is connected. It's also done. We have our .n file and we are saying hello world. And I think we can also... Yeah. So this is completely done. And we can move it also to done. So the last thing that we want to do now is to um, save everything to our remote repository and you see here we have our block and then we have our git folder which is connected to our GitLab project and inside our API project we also have a git folder this was created by the nest CLI and we don't want to use this so we delete it and now we can just commit our changes and we can say git commit minus, uh, git at minus upper a so we add all the files and then we say with a commit message, set up clock API with nest.js. And we are on master. See here. And now we are ahead of master by one commit and we can push it. And you see it's done. And now we can look it up. And if we refresh this, <coughs> we see that this is a block. Now I can just say at your own database string in the dot and file. You can use the free database from the and now we can just delete this and push it so we can say remove database database URL from git so this is done now we have fulfilled everything so since we have finished now the first video we want to have a small look at what is coming in the next video so we want to create very user feature module in nest.js we want to connect it to our Postgres database and we want to create basic CRUD endpoints and we will of course store all of this in the database so if we delete or create a user it is um, persisted to the database. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video. If you have some proposals to make the video better just comment them 